Hi everyone, I'm Mike Preston, Technical Marketing Architect here at Rubrik, and I want to welcome you to a series of videos where we'll cover off everything Rubrik and GraphQL. Today, I want to take a few minutes to talk about the Rubrik API landscape, what exactly GraphQL is, and why we made the choice to start using it. So with that, let's dive in. All right, we all know about Rubrik's API first architecture, right? Meaning every single process, every single function, every single event that happens with the Rubrik UI simply calls an underlying API endpoint to get the job done. Well, what this means is that you, as a customer, can also consume these underlying endpoints in order to automate certain data management tasks or integrate Rubrik into your favorite automation tool sets like PowerShell, Ansible, or Terraform. Now, traditionally, all of these endpoints are served up via the architectural constraints of REST. That said, over the past couple of years, we've been working really hard to also add the ability to build upon that software using GraphQL as well. While we have a mixture of both GraphQL and REST within Rubrik CDM currently, the end goal is to fully embrace GraphQL and eventually phase out these REST endpoints. In fact, with the rollout of Rubrik Security Cloud, we will only be offering GraphQL APIs to fulfill your automation and orchestration needs. So why did we make this architectural decision? Well, to better understand the why, let's first back up and talk about the what. What is GraphQL and how does it differ from REST? First, GraphQL is a query-based language, which allows us to build out an extensive query that will go out and fetch a specific subset of data. For example, say we want to retrieve a list of VMs within our environment. We're only looking to retrieve, say, their ID, name, and configured SLA domain. With GraphQL, we'd execute a query that looks something like this. We define our query, and then we specify exactly what data we would like to fetch. Our response performs all the queries, fetching, and filtering on the server side and returns only those values back that we requested. Now, let's look at this same example with REST. REST works in terms of endpoints. There's a variety of URIs mapped to and serving up respective objects and data. In order to get that same information with REST, we would send a GET request to our VMware slash VM endpoint. As you can see, we do get the information we're looking for. We see the ID, we see the name, we see the SLA domain, but we also get a whole bunch of other data back that we either don't need or really don't care about. Whereas GraphQL gave us only what we asked for. This concept is called overfetching. In fact, let's look at the actual differences in payload. There's a couple of different queries here. The first being our GraphQL query and the second being our REST query. If we look at the actual response data, our REST response is nearly 20 times the size as our GQL response. Now, while these numbers may seem small for a single query, imagine that this is running in an automated fashion, processing thousands of times against thousands of VMs. The unnecessary overhead and data traversing the network can certainly add up and slow down our automated workflows. So in short, GraphQL is really a more efficient way of consuming Rubrik APIs, and this is our main driver in moving towards utilizing it. Now, GraphQL is also relatively new to the API world, only being open source back in 2015. REST, well, it's been around since the early 2000s. So for this reason, you know, there's significantly less information out there on the internet about consuming GraphQL APIs. But that's where this video series comes in. Over the next handful of episodes, I really want to walk you through everything you need to know about GraphQL and Rubrik so you could start consuming GraphQL APIs on your own. So stay tuned for the next episode where we'll walk through some of the core concepts of GraphQL such as queries, mutations, and fragments. And then we'll explore the GraphQL schema and begin making our first query. Thanks for watching and see you soon.